Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part 35, lesson 34 of the Illumined Faith, Mystical Interpretation of the Gospel of St. John by R. Swinburne Clymer. Lesson 34, through love are all things made possible. St. John chapter 11, 37 through 57. 37, and some of them said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? 38. Jesus therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. 39. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh for he hath been dead four days. 40. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted his eyes, and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. 42. And I knew thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. 44. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loosen him, and let him go. 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. 46. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees, and told them what things Jesus had done. 47. Then gathered the chief priest and the Pharisees a council, and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. 48. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. 49. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. 50. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. 51. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. 52. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered about. Jesus came to teach man how to live. He came to teach man all the divine laws, so that whosoever would live in harmony with them and would follow him, not in mere belief, but in works, should become like him. He taught man how to use the forces of the awakened mind in developing and in constructing the soul, how, through his thoughts, his desires, and his deeds, to arouse to activity the divine spark within, which comes from above, from the Father. He taught how the spark of divinity latent in man's being might be aroused and become a conscious individualized soul. He taught that this is the resurrection, that this is life eternal, that this is becoming the Son of God, the living Christ, that this is the pearl of greatest price, that this is the one thing needful. This experience is referred to in various ways, Christhood, Mastership, Initiation, Adeptship, Attaining divine illumination, or soul consciousness, or the Christ consciousness, or immortality of soul, or conscious immortality. These are merely different names emphasizing different aspects of the one great truth that Jesus taught. Jesus taught men how to leave the world of flesh, how to face boldly the change called death. For it is not death to die, but entrance into everlasting life. Thus he came not to save one nation, but to save all nations by being an example to them. 
proving to them that there is no death for him that has accepted the Christ and has done the will of the Father. 53. Then from that day forth they took counsel together to put him to death. 54. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. 55. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover, to purify themselves. 56. Then sought they for Jesus, and spoke among themselves. As they stood in the temple, what think ye, that he will not come to the feast? 57. Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment, that, if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. In the symbolism of the East, the story of Lazarus and Martha and Mary is but the experience of one soul. Bethany means going through suffering or the place of affliction. No man has ever sought for the Christ until after he had been sore afflicted. It is when affliction comes upon us and all things of the flesh and of the world fell us that we turn within and seek for that which is not of the flesh. Failure to find assistance from the flesh or from the world or through the efforts of any human being brings about bitterness. And this is represented by Martha, for she dwells in the place of bitterness. Through affliction and through failure to receive help from that which has always brought us pleasure and profit, that which is higher, when we search, we find, and thus we receive light and become exalted. This is Mary, for she is the exalted one, having become exalted through accepting the Christ. And now when we have reached the exalted state, when we have received the light, we receive the assistance of God. This is Lazarus, come forth, for Lazarus is the assistant of the Father. Thus we have the mortal who is dead in the flesh, man ruled by his passions and carnal desires. Afflictions come upon him, and all that he holds dear fails him. He becomes bitter against those things upon which he had before depended, and which he thought could not fail him. He seeks and finds light and becomes exalted. And as he seeks still further, he receives the light of the Father and becomes the Christ. The resurrection has taken place. He lives. Lazarus has come forth. It is the parable of a life of a soul. The narrative is brief and simple, but the process that it represents is prolonged and complicated. It is the story of the souls becoming disentangled from the meshes of matter. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.